you ended up interviewing Bun B. I was upset about that because I had already <laughs> wanted the interview. Your big congratulations. You just had a huge event a few weeks ago. The Houston Rodeo, massive success. Because I'm a big UGK fan. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E. He the reason you see me. So, uh, when you left here, I'm going to go back to the hip hop. You left here and, and, and you, you, you know, again, you affirmed, you reaffirmed what I had said about, you know, y'all getting a little bit easier than us, getting things done a little more. You ended up interviewing Bun B. I was upset about that because I had already <laughs> wanted the interview. Yeah, big congratulations. You just had a huge event a few weeks ago. The Houston Rodeo, massive success. Because I'm a big UGK fan, we kind of connected on time. I met him several times, as you know. Um, I know the interview's coming, but I just was upset that you got it <laughs> and that the camera looked so damn good and that you set it up in this nice, I don't know if this was a warehouse or what, but it was so dope. And I want to tell you, if you're going to do it and you're going to you know, easily get it done because they come <laughs> to you, uh, I'm just so proud of the fact that you knew how to convey it once you got it there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You like, is this a compliment no, or what? Yeah. I'm like, where is he going with this? <laughs> I, know, me too. No, I loved it, man, though. I, I mean, but I just had to say it that way because I want him to know, to feel my pain. I didn't want him to get it first, but he got it. <laughs> and it's for, it's for the Rasa. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, <laughs> no, it was. You it know, was it was hard, so funny man. because, like, it was anytime I get into a conversation, you know, and those that know my background, my promoter background, you know, one of the first artists that I launched my current company with, right, Premier Live Experience, uh, was actually with Joe Budden. So yeah, yeah. I, I did eight shows with Joe Budden over the course of like maybe 16 months. So I got really close to his management team. And to this day, you know, one of the guys that's on his team has been one of the few mentors that I've had in the music industry. So I'm close to these guys. And, you know, uh, they were part of the reason why I jumped into podcasting. And what, and one of the conversations I had with uh, with Joe's manager, or one of the managers was, he mentioned to me, he's like, man, dude, if I was you, I would, you know, really, really lean into the Latin aspect of who you are mm -hmm. on your platform. Because, you know, I've interviewed people like Jay Prince on my platform, and, you know, I've interviewed prominent figures, you know, and it, it, I could go down the list, but some of those conversations, though they were informative, and if you're a student of the game or a student in the industry, I'm trying to tell a story so people can learn, it wasn't the, the, it wasn't connected on a broader level. It wasn't getting the viewership that, you know, we all aspire to have with platforms. The moment I started shifting and started going, well, you know what, let me do a little bit more Latin based content mm -hmm. within this conversation, because to be honest, who better, right? Like who could have those conversations, who can navigate those conversations in that way? I felt that responsibility. So when I got in front of a Bumby, whenever I got in front of a DJ Paul of 36 Mafia, and we're having these conversations, because believe it or not, DJ Paul gave me almost an identical clip. Has it hit your city yet? It's going to hit your city, so get your mm -hmm. tickets now. Mm -hmm. But how does it feel being able to have such long-term sustained success? And it did just as good, but Bun being a little bit more prominent here, you know, it went. And, and it, it, so when it went initially, it took off. And then went like three or four days ago, uh, it, it picked up again. It just went viral on Twitter last week. It did 10 million views on Twitter, like wow. yeah. literally a week yeah. ago. He said something on there that was dope about PMC and people using, you know, his his uh, his 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 material, his legacy, his likeness, his likeness, and and you know, and I I felt him on it, you know. But at the end of the day, I just know that man, pimp man, he was impactful. He stood for something that was greater than anything that we ever experienced. I don't think we've even ever gone to experience it again. Yeah. The way he represented the South. And and it's hard not to get around him. If you're a true fan of the music and the culture in the South, you're not getting around PMC. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, you know, I feel a responsibility anytime I get in front of these guys that, that are looked at as legends that have a, a, a strong voice. I feel a responsibility, like, what do I want to leave the viewer with? Because honestly, like, what different is it watching my interview with Bun than watching a Vlad TV interview with Bun or a Drink Champs interview with Bun or a... No, you're going to kill him. That's what different well, I mean, it is. No, a, let's not play. A, you come on Boss Talk, that's what we come I'm going to go in. This going to be a prime example of it. Yeah. I go in over here. No, but... But at the end of the day, that's what we're supposed to do in our own perspective. Absolutely. Like, the way you do it, can't nobody do you like you do Thank you. Thank you, man. And I appreciate can't nobody do me and Miss Jamaica like we do us Absolutely. and Money Moses when he come in the door. I'm just telling you, be the best you you could be 
Ain't nobody gonna be like and I'm, and I'm not just, And I'm not just saying this because That's hard, man. I'm not just saying this because I'm here, but like even right now, this conversation it's probably one of the most comfortable I've been in quite some time. And because, you know, because a lot of times, you know, you'll come in, it's like, ah, uh, you know, I want to be conversational. I want to be able to be open. But with that specific situation, you're right. My goal is to, okay, you know, this is what they're going to do with it. I don't even want to watch it. I'm right. I'm coming to knock your fucking head off. That's what right. I'm trying to right. do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, but and, then not even just that. It just depends on who you sit in front of. You don't know what their motives and how they're going to convey whatever you say and how it's going to come across. Because some people love that clout, love to twist and turn what you say into making it sound totally different from what you really meant. There's a piece in that interview, that Bunt, that Bunt interview, for those that are watching and that are becoming familiar with me for the first time, if you go back and you watch this interview with Bun B, there was multiple clips that went viral. You're right, the Pimp C clip, the clip about you know the Mexican-American sport. Yeah. But believe it or not, there's a part of that interview that is my favorite piece of it that has gone really overlooked, but it's when he's talking about his wife and I and I, I when I spoke she was there whenever we were really? doing it oh. and she was filming it but I remember I saw her and I said you know what this is a perfect opportunity to talk about the balance of work and professional life right, right. because it's hard to balance that and a lot of mm -hmm. creatives that get into that space don't know how to maintain a personal relationship and a, and a career so I asked him and man what he said in that interview is so impactful to me that I feel like anybody that's a creative, anybody that's an entrepreneur, anybody that's in the music industry or aspiring to be in the music industry and has a relationship or it feels like they're battling with how to you know, manage and, and, and balance it, um, they should watch that clip. So you Man. didn't clip it and put it put that part yeah. out? I have. I think I should bring it back now bring that I'm back. talking. I'm yeah. going to bring it back tonight. I think I'm going to cut it off. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Because it was, it was real. Like, you know, because people don't understand, like, to me, that's where I, I want to go. I want to get a little bit more personable. I want to get that those layers of somebody's story. Like, yo, man, like, you know, we understand. We already know the UGK story. So how many times can I tell it to you? You know, mm -hmm. like, you know. It never gets old. It never gets old. But it, no reason it never gets old because there's so many different aspects of it. I have so many different people that hit me up that I'll be trying to, and he don't realize this and they don't know this, but I go down through like riding dirty. I'm looking at every single person that was on that album. Yeah. <laughs> Super tight. I'm looking at all the different aspects of who was on that album. The first one, you know what I'm saying? And just, just all the way through UGK for life. Like I'm looking at how they layered it from Steve B. Low to all of those by uh, a Corey Moe, all those guys, man. And just looking at them and just, uh, you know everything about them. UGK is 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 that's Texas, man. Yeah, yeah. But not even just that. Just like how you said, how comfortable you feel by just sitting right here, and how people don't understand that just having a conversation it brings back a recollection of something in your past sometimes that yeah. you never even thought about bringing up in other interviews because of how comfortable you might feel at this moment in time and. Yeah. Just being asked a certain thing, you're like, oh, you know what? Such a, I never said this before, but da da da. And then you, although you're asking about UGK, you get something that nobody else has ever gotten. That's for sure. I think for me, too, whenever I go in, because people ask me, and I'm sure you guys get asked the same thing, you know, like, do you do you plan your questions? And honestly, I don't. No. We go in there and we just, we, 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 we free flow. Chit chat. <laughs> I might have an idea just because, you know, we know, okay, we're going to steer it in that direction, but. I had already interviewed Bun during the pandemic and I mm -hmm. did a phoner with him prior. So this was really my third interview. Okay. So I had already asked some of the questions like, hey man, word on the block was uh, you were supposed to be on Tupac's <laughs> album, right? Or hey, word on the block was you and uh, UGK and Tupac had a song together. Cause that was rumored. I've already asked that. I could have brought it back, but you like I want to have yeah. a new conversation. And then right. also, you know what? Like we want to leave it open for future conversations, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-He, the reason you see.